Dragon Age 4 will not be including any kind of multiplayer, Rainbow Six Siege is bringing cross-platform and 343 Industries talks about changes in Halo Infinite. Hey what's up everybody my name is Game Manas and welcome on to a brand new video of Gamer Connect where you guys are watching top gaming news of this very week so let's just go by hitting that like button and also ready to comment down below on whatever news you just see let's just go along with Halo Infinite Halo Infinite which was showcased last year is set to be a spiritual reboot because why call a soft reboot and you can always give it a new name of Spiritual Reboot. You obviously don't want to copy other names. According to the Sandbox lead Troy, he says that they want to introduce new ideas while still staying true to what it felt like to play those classic Halo games, by creating new experiences but still maintaining the original essence. A lot more things were talked about Halo Infinite in the recent Inside Infinite update which says that Grapple Shot that you must have seen in the gameplay is a new thing that they have added which is similar to that of Clamber. Clamber usually helps you in climbing higher structures but now Grapple Shot will basically help you the same since the structures are even taller. So Grapple Shot is basically grapple from Apex Legends that Pathfinder uses or any other grapples that you have seen in previous games like Dying Light, Batman and so on and so forth. They have decided to begin Chief's journey in Halo Infinite within the Pacific Northwest Forest biome on a new Halo ring. They are also making the appearance of jackals and grunts to look similar to that of Halo 3 and its previous games. Basically trying to make the visual look similar to the older games with a taste of new visuals. To keep that nostalgia going. Because who doesn't want to live in nostalgia? The campaign art lead says that they wanted to take the adventure to its roots and create a visual experience that is more clear than that of being very complex. It is an artistic representation of a world that they wanted to create instead of being photorealistic. In other words, just accept the art style and please do not complain about it. He also mentions that at night time, things will become very different with new visual aspects which is dynamically driven which just wasn't there in the previous games. At the very moment, there is no release date fixed for Halo Infinite but they have released some screenshots for the game. Also, uh, it's been told that they're wrapping up their final task to finish off or to end the development of this game. So which means it might be coming out soon. Since the report last year, there has been a lot of buzz going around PlayStation games coming to PC with major rumors being Bloodborne as one of the games. Although it wasn't the boss fighting, controller smashing and raging like a kid game that is coming to PC, but it's another zombie apocalypse game but the name Day is Gone. No, it's not Last of Us. Days Gone came back in 2019 as a PlayStation 4 exclusive title and initially got mixed reviews but over time many did like the game and after 2 years, now the game is coming to PC. This announcement came from Ben Studios who made the game that the game is coming out to PC sometime in spring and now the game has appeared on Steam as well along with the system requirements which actually does not look that bad. The game will have ultra wide support and unlock frame rates with improved graphics and of course everybody will play with the photo mode. The recommended requirements are not that bad, all you need is a GTX 1060 with a Intel i7-4770K or a Ryzen 5 1500X. Not that bad because it means that I can play that game in my Ryzen 2600 and a GTX 1050 Ti with medium to high settings. Yes, I'm happy. Along with Days Gone, it has also been reported that more first party titles are coming to PC. Now speculations are running wild what those games can be. People want God of War. Last of Us, Marvel Spider-Man, although all those games are, I believe are very hard to come to PC but but it could be very much possible that those games can come. But I'm looking forward to Bloodborne because I believe that game can come to PC. In 2019, EA committed itself to live service game which refers to a game structured around online elements such as Destiny 2 or Fortnite. In June of 2019, the CEO Andrew Wilson said that game as service is going to be the foundation to our industry and during October's earning call, Chief Financial Officer said that they're doubling down on the live service aspect of the games. With Dragon Age 4 being the next game from EA, people are speculating that it could also be a multiplayer live service game like Anthem. But since Anthem is no longer there, of course Dragon Age 4 will not have multiplayer. Actually according to a report from Bloomberg, Dragon Age 4 won't be having a live service game, rather it will be only single player, removing all and any multiplayer components. This decision was driven by two games, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order which was a huge success for EA and Anthem which no longer exists as the production stopped. 
Previously, it was planned by EA to add multiplayer in Dragon Age 4, where some said that the story will be single player, but the multiplayer would be focused on post release content. But now, all of that is not happening. To be honest, I don't believe that every game should have multiplayer. It's more of a general idea now for every game that every game should have a multiplayer. But no, in my opinion, especially games like RPGs, I believe, in my opinion, they should be single player more rather than multiplayer. Dragon Age 4 will be arriving in April of 2022. So let me know if you guys are excited for this very game. Since last year Ubisoft changed from Uplay to Ubisoft Connect Client, they also promised that future games will have cross-play and cross-saving. Unfortunately, in that time, Rainbow Six Siege was not one of those games. But guess what? It is now. During a recent preview of the upcoming Crimson Heist season, Siege game director said that they are actively working on cross-play and cross-saving features in the game. He said that this crossplay should happen in the realm of consoles, so basically between Xbox and PlayStation. According to him, some countries have more of PlayStation players than Xbox, for example Asia, where players right now are having a hard time finding a match, and this crossplay will allow them with less matchmaking times to play between PlayStation and Xbox. However, this crossplay won't be happening with PC, as Hal, who is the game director, believes that there are many pros as well as many cons. One of the biggest cons he mentioned was the PC players using keyboards and mouse, which gives them precise aim in the game and since in consoles there is no aim assist, it's harder for them to aim in general. Many console players are even using external mouse and keyboards to use it in the game. Even with that, he's skeptical that it's not a good idea to have crossplay with PC players since it will be a disadvantage for consoles. However, people can transfer progress from last gen console to PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X easily without any issue but again, the cross progression between Xbox, PlayStation and PC is still not a thing and Hal believes that one day they will be able to fill that gap as well. Currently Rainbow Six Siege announced Year 6 season, Crimson Heist with a new operator and much more. Even though things are going good with Rainbow Six Siege, the same cannot be said with Dying Light 2 as frustrations are coming across the developmental team. This comes from a report by The Gamer which says that the development of the game is struggling due to the management style of the CEO of the company. Interviews with former and current employees tells that there are conflict at production level, external consultants who don't have any experience over games are heavily relied on and their advices are also ignored. Techland also has a history of hiring new people only to turn out not being useful. Any new hires and consultants who does not follow the company line are being sidelined and that ends up being a resignation or a termination. Techland uses Chrome Engine for Dying Light and after its success in the first game, the chief development officer at the time wanted the development of the sequel to be iterated in a more widely used engine such as Unity or Unreal Engine before bringing it to Chrome Engine. But the CEO denied the request and insisted to work with the Chrome Engine, which has slowed down the progress and frustrated everyone. The CEO even says why they are not working faster, but in order to work faster, they want to go somewhere which the CEO is denying to, basically talking about the Unity engine. So how can they work faster? Another employee told the gamer that the current production pipeline changes so much that it might not exist at all. More producers are hired to turn the wheels but are stopped by veteran employees. It sounds like everyone just has to work on what the veteran employees are saying and has to work faster in those slow processes that they're actually referring to. With that, I cannot imagine how frustrating it might be and I also believe that everyone must be crunching to make this game even better or release this game as soon as possible. Another employee also said that what is going on in Techland is utter chaos. There are many examples where someone is responsible for a certain feature and he or she decides on something only to get rejected by the CEO for some weird reason. Ever since all these complaints, Techland actually released a statement saying that they're trying to work on making the environment as friendly as possible and also bringing the dream of being a developmental team a success and not only that, bringing a change in the development process if possible. It is definitely weird to see what's going on with Techland and how frustrations are building upon with developers. With so many people saying the same thing, it is very hard to understand on how the process of Techland is actually going on. With that being said, Dying Light 2 has not have a release date. It also does not have a release year yet. So we don't know when the game is coming out, how the development process is, and how long will it take for the game to come out. But I only hope that the game comes out as soon as possible. Not only that, 
it does not affect the developers as much. Well, that is it for this episode of Top Gaming News. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, comment down below on what you think about any of the news we just discussed. And also, do not forget to subscribe for more awesome, awesome content coming to Gamer Connect. My name is Gaming Manus and I'll check you guys out in the next one. Until then, stay awesome and keep on playing games.